Thank you. Hi, I'm Ruth, and I'm going to be talking about flame graphs. So this is me. I'm a core site reliability engineer at Pinterest. We, um, we're the people who gets paged when Pinterest goes down. Um, and we're also working to continuously improve the reliability of Pinterest, and that includes doing uh, production readiness reviews and that kind of thing, and building systems to be more reliable. So uh, my talk is going to be talking about um, salt and why we use it, and then also flame graphs and what are they and how do they work, the architecture of the tool that I made, and then also use cases. So this, this talk is about a, uh, a little web app that I made so that people could make flame graphs and profile their services. So um, we use salt for remote execution, and this helps improve operational maturity. So without something for remote execution, people would be logging into the machines via SSH and then making production changes, or using Dish. Does anyone, has anyone used Dish before? Distributed SSH? So this is when you want to make changes on multiple machines at the same time. Um, and this, sometimes people will use this to fix production outages, but you can also accidentally cause production outages um, by doing things on multiple production machines at the same time. So um, Salt, uh, it's, it, has, it has logging to see who's doing what, so you can reproduce whatever's been done if you break something. It's also secure, so it makes the security team a lot more happier. Um, and we also connect it with Rendeck and other things at the company. And so we're hoping to get to a point where developers never need to log on to production machines. So a bit about flame graphs. Um, I work at Pinterest. Does anyone here use Pinterest? What do you like to pin? Uh, too private. Too private. I like to pin a lot of baking stuff. I also like to pin a lot of DIY, um, like stuff I want to laser cut or make or sew or whatever. Um, yeah, I love Pinterest. A lot of other people do too. We've got 200 million and growing monthly users, 150 terabytes processed daily, tens of thousands of machines, and hundreds of services, microservices. So you can imagine that any gain in efficiency is a, um, me means that we're saving money, and then also users can use it faster and see more ads. Um, so here are some tools that you would use to do profiling and figure out where your service is inefficient, but um, they're they're good, but they, it can be hard to get that granular visibility into which part of your service is actually causing the inefficiency. So this is what a flame graph looks like. So it's actually a visualization of the, um, the perf, perf tool output. And so this allows you to see uh, how much CPU time each function in your code is using. And so if you have a function that calls another function, that will be stacked on top. And then lastly, the color is random. So the color is just to, so you can like differentiate the boxes. The color doesn't mean anything. And so the, the boxes that are longer mean that they're taking up more CPU time. Um, so these were developed by Brendan Gregg. Uh, I think he works at Netflix. Um, and so it's, it's a high resolution snapshot of what the CPU is doing. And it's, it's much easier to read compared to the pages and pages of output you'd get out of perf. And you can also like zoom in and stuff because it's in an SVG format which is nice. So a bit about the tool that I made. So we talked about how this is bad. Um, and this is the tool that I made. So uh, developers used to have to log into the machine and then like run. They would, they would paste in commands to get their flame graph. Uh, but instead, we have this little web app. And so now you just pick uh, what service it is and then what machine you want to run it on. And then it does it for you. Um, and then you, you, so you can make a new profile. You can view the old prof profiles that have been made. And you can also diff profiles. So here's an example of a diff, and you can see that there's some sort of regression where this sort events thing is taking a lot longer than it should be. Um, so just real quick how it's set up. So there's a Flask web app. This calls Rendeck, which we're using for uh, automated runbooks. Um, and then that hooks up with Salt, which actually does the remote execution. Cool. Oh, and by the way, if you're doing stuff with containers and you're doing flame graphs, watch out. There, um, sometimes, like, sometimes when you're doing profiling, the objects don't match, and uh, depending on what language you're using, you may have to turn on and off special flags. Um, so some examples of how people, how flame graphs save the day at Pinterest. Um, so we have something called engagement service, and this, is, this deals with like, notifications for engaging the user. And um, this is what it looks like normally. This is a healthy engagement service. And we decided, Rajath at Pinterest decided to add a sort notifications function. And so if uh, somebody is saving a pin that you saved and they have a lot of similar interest to you, then maybe you want to make that notification uh, show up higher on the notification feed. 
So he did that. And this is, this is the fleet size. So at Pinterest, a lot of our, our services are auto-scaled, and that means that um, if the CPU is going up, then it will automatically launch new machines to run your service. And so you can see that the fleet size is going up and up and up, and that's really, really bad. So it means that there's a, some sort of CPU regression where the CPU is a lot higher than it should be. And so, of course, he did a flame graph to see what was going on. And you can see this red sort events over here. Um, it's taking up a lot of CPU, and that's bad. So using this information, he, he looked back at his code, and he decided, um, he, was, he decided to be a little bit more selective about when and what they were sorting. Um, and he fixed it. So now I think sort events is, it's, like, it's a lot smaller. I forget where it is. But it's not a problem anymore, and he was able to fix it. Oh, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's right there. Can, can you see it? It's like in orange beside save models. It's right here. Um, which is way better. So another example, this is one of a bad deploy. So this is, uh, this is our, like, our like monolithic API thing. And this is what it looks like when it's healthy. We did a deploy, and um, it, was, it was really slow. Like something was terribly wrong, there were lots of errors, and we rolled back immediately, and we were like, what's going on, like what's wrong? And so we did a flame graph. And those two, that double barrel, that, that actually goes like way off the screen. Like <laughs> there's a, I couldn't fit it on the side. And uh, it turns out what happened is that there was a bug in a upgrade that was made to the C accelerated thrift branding protocol. And that would have been really, really hard to find because it's like pretty deep down um, without having the flame graph. And so we were able to fix that, and all was well. So um, the idea with this kind of project is to encourage software engineers to profile their services and keep thinking about efficiency. Um, I feel like when you're at a big company and like somebody else is taking care of the, the, the hardware and the servers and all that stuff, it's very easy. You know, you launch the service, you like press a button and like it's running. You don't have to think about how much it costs or what it's, what it's actually doing in there. Um, but so we're trying to bring a little bit of that back to the developer and being like, hey, this is what your code is actually doing and you should be careful about it. Yeah, so the, the Flask web app was made by me. Rajath is a huge power user of it, um, and he also provided the engagement service example. Joe Gordon has been a flame graph evangelist at Pinterest and fixed a lot of things using flame graph. And Jamie is a senior at Surrey who helps set up Rundeck and Salt. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Do I? Thank you. I have time for questions? Ah. OK, so if you have a question, there's a microphone. And you can also raise your hand, and I can repeat your question. Does anyone have any questions about Pinterest or SRE or flame graphs? Yes. Can you diff two flame graphs? Yeah, you can. And uh, Brendan Gregg, I think, has has some scripts and stuff for that. Yeah. And so uh, the the diff that I showed earlier was the sort events regression. Yes. How do I, sorry? How do you test the services at Pinterest? Uh, so it depends. It's, so we have 500 engineers, and you can imagine that it's a little bit of a mess sometimes. But uh, one thing that we're doing is we're doing kind of a dockerization effort. So when a service is dockerized, you can run it on your, on your development machine, and it, in theory, would run exactly the same as you would run it in prod. So you can test it that way. Um, some services uh, allow you to send some traffic to like a test machine. Um, but yes, I agree that testing is a hard problem. Yeah, someone in the back over there? Yeah. Uh, Joe might know more about that, but we, I think we found some scripts online, and then the only customization that we had to do was to figure out which was the process that we wanted to profile. So there's, there's stuff online for Python and Node if you want to do specifically Python and Node applications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's hard to it, it like can't match up the the objects. Like it can't it can't name the functions properly. So if if you're encountering this error, you'll see that like a lot of them like won't have a name or there'll be some sort of like placeholder name. Yeah. 
Uh, so somebody in the back over there. Yeah, so instead of having uh, to like log in the machine or do something, uh, developers could choose when they wanted to run the frame graph and just easily do it on the web app. Someone in the back over there? How do we orchestrate our containers? This is a currently unsolved problem. Uh, <laughs> We're, we did some, I think we were looking into Mesos and we're also looking into Kubernetes, but we don't have anything done yet. We've, yeah, there are people that are working on it. Uh, I think currently right now we just have the Docker containers running um, as they would on the machines, so there's no orchestration right now for the most part. Any other questions? Yes, so we, uh, on a, we usually, our default is just 15 minutes. It's kind of like an arbitrary default. Um, but yeah, you want, you want a long enough time that the flame graph looks the same if it's doing the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>